Yeah, what's up, Giants fans, Hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at it again. Actually, for the first time this season, I believe a little bit of a preview video slash thoughts before the game video for Week Six: New York Giants versus Baltimore Ravens, or I should say, the Baltimore Ravens at the New York Giants because they are visiting us. For the first time since 2016, they will be playing the game at MetLife Stadium. Now, the last time these two teams faced off was actually in 2020 under Joe Judge and the Giants lost. I'm pretty sure it was a blowout. <clears throat> but the year before that, or not the year before that, the matchup before that was the aforementioned 2016 one where there's a lot of parallels, a lot of similar storylines going on. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure you guys know. Uh, for those of you that don't, let me quickly introduce them. In 2016, the Giants were off to a pretty good start. We're off to a way better start now in 2022, um, but we were playoff bound, and this team is looking playoff bound. Also, in 2016, it was a week six matchup. It was at home, just like this one. In 2016, it was a week six matchup between two winning teams, I believe. You know what I'm saying? Same thing here. And, and of course, we came out with the W. That was also uh, Odell's probably best game as a New York Giant I think it was he went for 222 yards or something like that now we don't have an Odell but we do have a Saquon this time around as y'all could see I'm still rocking the bucket hat tie-dye bucket hat that I got at MetLife Stadium a couple weeks ago when I went to watch the Chicago Bears I really wanted to wear my draft hat today but I'm keeping everything the same in terms of what I've done before the games because I'm really really high with the fo football superstitions right now man um making this video is probably a mistake because i haven't made a preview video in any of our wins but we shall see now for those of you that didn't catch it young guns podcast uh this past wednesday night at the end of the show what we had about a 40 minute segment with guest engraven from engraven videos he's a great ravens content creator and general nfl content creator as well Obviously, we had him on to talk about this matchup. Engraven is the, the Ravens expert, and he was going to give us all the knowledge we needed to know about his team. If you didn't catch it, I'll put a link down below and maybe when the eye pop up in this video. And I learned a couple things that made me way more comfortable going into this match than I did before I talked with him. It's very similar to the Green Bay Packers matchup last week, where it's a game that is way more close than everybody is giving it credit for or i should say nfl fans are giving it credit for because giants fans are on a high right now they rightfully so including myself think that we could be in any game that we play this year but for regular nfl fans i'm seeing comments like oh baltimore is going to dismantle the giants the giants are going to get destroyed and i i just don't think that's correct i i don't think the giants are going to get necessarily destroyed by m any team in the nfl this year except maybe the Buffalo Bills because they're an absolute superpower offense right now but our defense keeps us in games our coaches have a great mentality that the players embody and they're gonna fight to the very end well let me talk about what has me a little bit more confident entering this game and that is the fact that the Ravens weaknesses are the Giants strengths let me start off with probably the biggest factor that is second half performances if you're a Giants fan, if you've been watching these games these past five weeks, you don't need stats to tell you or analytics to tell you that we are a great second half team in the NFL. Every single game we won, we won in the second half. With the exception of the Chicago game, where I think we led for basically most of that game, our other three wins were comeback wins. Starting off with the first game of the season, we scored zero points in the first half, 20 points in the second half to win against the Titans. Um, or was it 21? Um, then with the second game, I believe it was also a comeback win. Uh, third game that we won, obviously Chicago, we led most of it. And then Green Bay, where we only scored 10 in the first half and then uh, 17 in the second. For the most part, they've all been comeback wins. That's a result of the offense finally catching fire and hitting their stride. And the defense doing an incredible job of shutting down offenses in the second half. Once again, best example being Green Bay, where we held them to essentially zero offensive points in the second half defense did his thing and our offense went to work in terms of coming back tying the game and then getting the go ahead touchdown to win we have a plus 39 point differential in the second half of the nfl so far this year which i believe is the best um we are the best second half team in the nfl that's no exaggeration it's a fact you flip over to the Ravens side and they're not so good 
their two losses this year, two very famous losses, have been complete collapses from their team offensively and especially defensively. It's games that they simply put have choked the lead. The Dolphins, um, I believe, was one of them. And the Bills was the other. Where both games, they held pretty good leads in the first half. And both games, their defense just gave it up. And their offense couldn't do enough to keep up with whatever firepower the opposing team started to catch fire with. The Ravens are not a good second half team. They've shown so far that they're prone to collapsing and that their defense, which historically the Ravens have always had a vaunted defense, so far this year, not so much. They can't really get to the quarterback as much as they used to. I think the strongest part of their defense is their secondary, and even then, it's only been this past game against Joe Burrow and the Bengals where they've really shown to play up to their elite potential. I'm not saying that they're not going to play elite against us because they still have two of the best cornerbacks in the league there with some pretty good safeties and we have you know a really really downtrodden wide receiving core but what i'm basically getting to is that i'm not necessarily scared of this ravens defense it's not the same as ravens defenses of the past some of that has to do with personnel some of that has to do with coaching most definitely as giants fans we make a lot of jokes saying that they miss week martindale and we thank them for week martindale there's some truth to those jokes the next weakness of the ravens which is still going to be part of their defensive side here that's a complete strength for the Giants is their run defense. We are the number one running offense in the NFL. Saquon Barkley is of course the most major part of that, but another really viable part that you should keep your eye on is Daniel Jones. Um, you know, in games where he has been running the football, uh, it has led us to a great rushing attack. Chicago being the best example of that, where I think he had 68 to 70 yards rushing, and that game we had around 250 total yards rushing we just ground and pound on the ground and completely decimated the bears defense the ravens haven't faced the most elite cornerbacks thus far this season and they've been they've been allowing these uh i'm sorry i said cornerbacks running backs this past season and they've been allowing these running backs to get good production on them the first two weeks against the jets and the dolphins production wise not nothing much to keep your eye on i think they were both around 80 yards total rushing in the game but what you notice here are these averages with the jets you're allowing six yards per carry on average for michael carter Brees hall is getting 3.4 yards per carry a little bit of a sign that maybe you even though you're not allowing too many yards something could break free and happen dolphins same thing you're allowing 4.6 yards per carry 6.6 yards per carry and then the very next week against the patriots is where it just all breaks out and this is like basically three straight weeks of amazing rushing games against the Ravens starting with the Patriots who had like 140 yards on the ground rushing against the Ravens and what are they keeping up that yards per carry average then you go with the Bills the Bills are not known to be a rushing team they also ended up having I think it was around 110 to 120 yards on the ground a lot of that from Josh Allen of course uh Devin Singletary got a little bit in there but like I said he's not known to be a rushing player and then just uh, this past week against the Bengals, Joe Mixon had a good game of 78 yards on the ground with 5.6 yards per carry. And you're keeping your eye on this saying that the Ravens, their run defense, it's not terrible. But it's not good enough, in my opinion, to stop one Saquon Barkley, who's been on a tear this season. And I don't think they have what it takes to stop him in the rushing game. Saquon, he's the best version of Saquon we've seen, as we've all talked about numerous times he can still bounce it outside but he's gonna get those dirty yards and he's gonna make that defense hurt up the middle and now with what i've seen josh allen has done against them and this is by no way comparing daniel jones and josh allen i just simply think daniel jones is the second best rushing quarterback that they're gonna face this season which feels weird to say but it's the truth and uh josh allen got 70 yards from them i am confident daniel could get 30 to 40 rushing yards on them maybe on a bootleg or something or maybe just picking up some first downs. But our rushing offense is the best in the NFL. And it should feast on a Ravens rushing defense. Which is not so much the best. More like an average, below average defense in the NFL when it comes to rushing. And now the final thing that's kind of a weakness for the Ravens. That's only recently become a little bit of a strength for the Giants. Is pass protection. The Ravens offensive line. Uh, they've been doing a good job of protecting lamar jackson in terms of sacks but he's been getting pressured a little bit and of course when he runs out the pocket he's completely dangerous as is most modern day 
are mobile quarterbacks. But we just saw two games in a row where our pass rush seems to be catching a little bit of life. Chicago, and even though we only had, I think was one sack against Green Bay, you watch the game, you knew we were pressuring Aaron Rodgers a little bit and making him uncomfortable. We're supposed to get back Leonard Williams this game. Maybe we're going to get back Aziz Ojolari. But Leonard Williams by himself alone, with the way Dexter Lawrence has been performing up the middle and Kayvon Thibodeau coming on, you see him getting these pressures, you see him getting bad passes, getting held every single play. We might be in for a really good pass rush game for the New York Giants. And this Ravens O-line, once again, has not been doing the best job of protecting against pressures. Maybe we could rattle Lamar Jackson. A little bit of wishful thinking, yes. But just going to put that out there for y'all. This defense is due. I mean, it's due for the first pick of the season as well. But I think it's due for a good pass rush game from the guys up front. And when you consider the factors I talked about, like I said, there's going to be a way closer game. And I'm going to go with the homer inside of me, with the fan inside of me. And I'm going to say that the Giants win. I talked about my superstitions earlier. I've picked the Giants to win every single game that we've been in this year. And it's worked four out of five times. And I'm going to continue to do so. And I really am. It's, it's so cliche. It's a little bit corny to me. But you feel it this season. It's really a Giants versus the world type of mentality. But people are still not giving the New York Giants enough credit, enough respect. And you look at where things line up. Do the Ravens have advantages against us? Most certainly, without a doubt. But we have a few advantages on them as well. And I and I really do think we have some of the best coaches in the league that are going to make some things happen. And we're going to pull out with a win. You guys put your thoughts down below, Giants fans. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe. And I'm out.